Greetings my fellow Dingbats, comrades and random people. Welcome to another YouTube video I am making today on the Prusa i3 print stabilizer for the Z axis. Well, as you can see here, I've drawn up here in SketchUp very uh, conveniently and yes, it looks great. This is a stabilizer for the stock collar that comes with the threaded rods for the Prusa i3, as you can see here, this is my prototype uh, mod zero of the stabilizer. I believe someone's done this before though, but their design is a bit inefficient, requiring a hex nut that you have to buy, whereas you already have the collars here, the threaded collars, you can see here, that brass thing, yep. And this is the GEEE Tech i3 Prusa. So, well, it's had a lot of problems with the Z-axis here, I'll show you. Because when you bring it down, it's in that wobble. Look at that. That's like a nearly one millimeter wobble, I think. Yeah, it's a lot of wobble. So the problem with this was, the threaded rods always got stuck with the uh, printer as the print head went down to the table. But what I have created, and several other people on YouTube have as well, is this thing here, as modeled off that, and printed using the model zero stabilizers that I have invented. Except this is a much easier design to put on because you just simply slide it onto the two rods and then you just tighten up the screws. You don't have to take the whole thing off again and waste endless hours of your time. This is why this is a probably superior design. As you can see, I have included a slot here so that you can just slide it in and this bit is de-elevated so you can uh, have this over here flat and then this bit over here flat as well so you have a, a elevated platform and stealing someone else's design here I have added a bit of a slope on both sides to better accommodate the lesser friction that it would experience during the travel of the z-axis. So, let's go ahead and assemble this, shall we? So, right here we have the printhead already elevated to one of the highest positions possible, and um, you will need a cable tie, yes. And fortunately, the Prusa i3 came with many of these, but here I am using a non-proprietary one, which I bought from the $2 shop for, as you guessed it, $2.50. And I am going to attach this with the camera because I still have a phone. I'm honestly not bothered to buy a camera, so bear with me. As I single-handedly cable tie this because I'm just that badass. And come on. Oh yes, oh yes, very nice. As you can see, I have threaded it through. Progress, yes. Oh dear. This is a bit... Okay, I'll, I might not have to use two hands for this. There, that's better. So, now that you've secured it, hopefully, very securely, uh, you want to remove the print head all the way to the cable tie so it's uh, balanced. And pray that this thing doesn't break while you're assembling your new thing. So, what you want to do with this carriage uh, carrier is you want to get your allen key or whatever the hell you use to assemble this. Uh, I really can't find mine right now, but it was here a few seconds ago. And, uh, well, uh, yes, there it is. It's underneath the printer. So what you want to do is take this and uh, basically unscrew all of these. Though it's better done if you have a screwdriver, which was provided for free with the GEEE -E Tech i3 here. And uh, you want to undo all the screws, so uh, this might be a bit tight because I didn't have too much tolerance with the first print I had. So I'm going to have to use Allen keys to unscrew this. Uh, this is definitely going to be time lapsed because no one's going to bother watching this. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and hopefully loosen this the right way. Oh, 
before. So you had to do more screwing. Yes, but now this is universal, so you can fit it on any carriage any way you want. So how it works is you slot it on the top of this, it slides in the collar. What you want to do, if it's a bit loose, like if your printer is trashy like mine, well then you put a cable tie around the front like this. Which, uh, for this collar, here's one I prepared earlier with a file. I've cut out a bit of a slot here. No, uh, I might edit it. My, um, yeah, I'll edit my freaking SketchUp file and put the slots in there and save as an STL for you guys. So, yeah, you want to put that on. You want to get a cable tie. Right here. My apologies for the mess. I've been working on this for the last few uh, weeks. AKA one week. And, yeah, you want to tie this on like that. But first, I think I need to put a screw on because it's not holding very properly. Well, the main reason for that is because I've made the tolerances uh, quite large. Because for the Prusa i3, if you're making your first print stock, it's probably not going to be the best print quality, and tolerances will be absurdly bad for the first print as well. But, uh, yeah, it seems like I need a one. This is definitely 300% compatible with the GEE Tech i3s and could probably work on uh, your own printers if you modify it a bit. Say if it's like uh, not GEE Tech, but yeah, should work. I mean, it's non proprietary, unlike freaking uh, Apple. So it should work on any Prusa i3 machine that uses the same threaded rod and collar. In fact, this doesn't even have like a slot for the collar, so it just slides straight on on the bottom. In reality, uh, two screws should actually just be enough, because you don't need too many. After all, the, the companies here always overdo it, in case you have loose screws and want to claim warranty, but you can't because they're Chinese. I'm gonna get a partial refund for this as well because some of the threaded rods uh, came a little bent. So that's tight. That is tight. Now the last screw and the cable tie. And then a print demonstration, which I will probably follow up with. Really, if you're installing this properly and carefully, you don't even need to do the homing thing for your z-axis later. You don't need to manually twist the bars, because this will be perfectly aligned. If, of course, you keep the collar in the same spot, which is a bit of a challenge. Today we are doing some more printing on the 3D printer. As you can see here, I have reinstalled the drivers for the Z-axis. They all be uh, stabilized really well. Now, as you can see here, I've actually put a cable tie around it so that it won't do any funny things like move around while uh, the screw is turning, you know. Uh, my second version of this, in fact, let's get that up on my screen includes, instead of this, like, having such a big gap, it's actually, like, squished together. So, when you slide it on, it doesn't just slide on, it actually clips onto the thing. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm currently printing one of my projects, the Project Cryogen, as I'm calling it. And the print accuracy is quite good, although there's a bit of warping here because the layers are now delaminated, somehow. I mean, my temperatures are having some problems here because it's not welding properly to each layer. Especially since I'm printing at 0.2 millimeters. And also because this um, Polo Lulu freaking driver board has a potentiometer issue. Like when you press down on the potentiometer, sound changes of the stepper motor of the uh, extruder. But then when you don't press down on it, it makes a sound and it's really messed up. So let me show you the. Uh Exactly, is it? It is the shop 
preparing the precise three. Yep. But the accuracy of this is definitely much, much better. As you can probably see a lot better with this piece here, which is a Raspberry Pi case I printed just uh, yesterday, in fact. And it also has a bit of a delamination at the bottom because I had to pull it up really hard, like using a knife as well. But this printed relatively better because it had 0.1 millimeters of accuracy. It works! I plugged all the cables in and it can uh, do pretty much anything as you can see. The resolution is very, very good. Even though there's like some very slight waveform of around 0.1 millimeters, it's really negligible. Like compared to an earlier print, like these stabilizers, which weren't really that well designed, or uh, let me see, this print, which was a two-part. I made a square and then a hammer and circle and nylon fishing wire, which is quite ironic. Uh, yeah, this doesn't come out too well, and especially since there was so much of that axis wobble, it looked absolutely horrible. But now I fixed it. As you can see on the left portion here, it is much finer in resolution. I still have to fix the extruder though. But as you can clearly, clearly see, once I start up the SketchUp file. Sorry for the mess again, by the way, because this is really... This improvised workspace. <clears throat> you can see that I've actually updated the design. Now, uh, let me just show you. My mouse can work yet. So, here you can see that, in fact... I've pulled this in a bit from the original position, so it's created these two more lines here, but it's actually gone in a single millimeter from both sides. But be assured, it is very much still compatible, and it will snap on very easily. And using Google SketchUp, if you want to modify this, it is extremely simple and easy to do. Apart from that, I've also got the STL file and folder. So, easy download, easy print. Make sure you set your uh, printer to the appropriate settings so get it as accurate as possible because uh, I've also accounted for some tolerances too, so you might want to take that into mind. Because um, I've made an 0.5mm tolerance for just about everything. So, just basically made everything a tad larger, so the holes are a tad larger, so the rims and everything else. But with this, you should be able to print a very accurate Z-axis stabilizer, and it should work very well. Your prints should come out beautifully, like this. Yeah, except I need to really fix my extruder. If you guys know of any uh, extruder problems like this, please also tell me, as any help would greatly be appreciated. Because with this crappy potentiometer, I really can't do much. Oh well, this is Compu Guy speaking a wing clip gaming, which I'll be doing gaming videos under soon. Stay tuned, and see you next year. Drop a like or I'll drop your screwdriver today. Subscribe for more videos and glorious hacks with computers and different materials, like 3D printers and Pentium ones and other things more to come.